Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. Today we are going to discuss about the fluid definition or rather we are going to define fluid from technical perspective. But before we move on to fluid, we are all aware and we have also understood this particular uh, fact in our school education as well that matter generally exists in three particular forms. Either it is in solid or in liquid or in gas. And the matter which is in liquid and gaseous form, they are referred as the matter called fluid. We are aware about that. So normally if we ask anybody that what is fluid, people say that fluid is a matter or substance that can flow, right? And we ask for the examples, they say that we use water, we use you know, fruit juice, we have milk, we drink milk regularly, we breathe in oxygen or air rather and we use fuel. So all of these are the examples of fluid. Now my question is and my uh, you know comment is that this is not the definition of fluid rather. I can say fluid is substance that can flow. That means flowing is the ability of fluid. It is rather the characteristic of fluid. It is not the, it is not something which with the help of which fluid can be defined. So let us see now what is the exact technical definition of the fluid as a substance. And in many books, people have written it in a different way. And it is also confusing many a times. So this lecture is meant for all those students and faculties or members who are trying to understand that how fluid are exactly defined from technical jargons. So, before I move on to fluid, I would like to take you to an experiment which is done with the help of solid. So, let's say I have two plates, a lower plate and an upper plate and uh, in between these plates, I, I have a solid material called rubber, okay. Now, rubber is fitted in this plate, plate such a way that, uh, you know, you can assume that the upper surface of the rubber is in very, very uh, close touch with the upper plate so that there is no relative motion between the rubber and upper plate. And on the other hand also, if you see the bottom surface of the rubber is already glued to the lower plate. So there is no relative motion between the rubbers and the lower plate as well. Now, if I keep lower plate fixed, if I fix this plate and if I don't allow it to move and if I ask somebody off from you to pull the upper plate. So let us say firstly, if I look the entire arrangement from this side, from the front view, I'll say something like this. I have the lower plate, I have the rubber, I have the upper plate. Okay, and if I ask any one of you to pull the upper plate with certain force, let's say value of F Newtons. Now, this bottom plate is fixed, the lower plate is fixed. You only need to pull the upper plate. What will happen? What do you think? You will see that with this, depending on the value of force F, there will be a deformation in this rubber. Now, the angle, if I zoom in, you will see that the angle with which the deformation has taken place is, let's say, beta, beta degrees. The value of this beta depends on the value of force F. Yes or no? More the force, more is the value of beta. But here you need to take understand one point. Till the moment, up till the moment you keep on applying this force, this deformation is going to be fixed. So let's say if I take an example, for example, if I put up a force of 1 Newton and for 1 Newton of force, the angular deformation I have observed is 3 degrees. So till 1 Newton is keep on applied at here at this particular plate, the deformation is 3 degrees, which is constant. The moment you remove this, you, you might see the rubber taking the original shape rather fully or partially, it depends, right? Now, if you increase the force, obviously the deformation is going to increase, let's say 6 degrees. For, on, on further increasing of force, you will see more deformation as well. But the only point is for solid materials. Up till the moment you keep on applying the force, the rather shear force, the angular deformation is particular value and it is constant. It will not, so a rubber material after being deformed, it will stay there till the force is being applied. The moment you release the force, the rubber material will come back. Otherwise, it will stay there, right? Now, let us perform the same experiment. But now the material is changed. Now the substance is changed. Let us say now we use fluid, okay? So now if I have water, for example, between the two plates, if I see it from the front side, I will see something like this. I have lower plate, upper plate and the water in between. And if I ask someone of you to pull the upper plate with certain force, let's say F. Do you think what will happen? I mean, do you think that the water will behave exactly similar to what rubber was behaving? For a particular force F, what you will see is, can you imagine water to come at, at a hold after a particular deformation? I don't see. If you even imagine, you cannot imagine that part, right? So what I mean to say, when you, when you look at this, you will see that with a particular value of force F, this variation is not constant. The, the, the angle is not fixed. Rather, you will see the angle is continuously deforming. The water is continuously deforming up till the force is applied. The moment you release the force, the deformation will stop. But till the time force is there, the deformation will keep on, uh, you know, uh, the, the fluid will keep on deforming. 
Now the question is, then what happens to the value of F? So in rubber, rather in solid, with the value of force, the higher the value of force, the larger was the angular deformation. But here since the angular deformation is always there, continuously deforming, then what happens when I increase the force? So here there is a take, when you increase the force, the rate at which the deformation was taking place will increase. Which means, let us say for example, uh, I put this as d beta by dt, the rate of change of this angle. So let us say uh, when you apply the force of 1 Newton, when you apply the force of 1 Newton, the rate of change of angle is let us say 4 degrees per second, which means if you keep on applying this force for 4 seconds, what will happen in every second, the angular deformation is 4 degrees. So in 4 seconds, total deformation is 16 degrees. Okay. Now you do the same experiment, but now with an elevated value of force. Now, if you increase the value of force to 3, degree, 3 newtons, what will happen is deformation will keep on, uh, you know, continuously happening, but the rate will increase. So now, earlier the the deformation was 4 degree in one second. Now, because force is increased, the deformation is 12 degrees in one second. So now take this point. In case of solid, the, there was no continuous deformation. There was a fixed deformation and then it was steady at that particular point. In fluid, the fluid will never be steady. It will keep on deforming, but the rate of deformation is particular value. So, depending on the value of force, the rate is fixed and depending on the rate, the velocity v so with which the plate is moving continuously will be fixed, v meter per second, right? Now, let us say this is the case, if I reduce the force to a very, very small value, 0 0.001 Newton. Now, what will happen is, depending on this understanding, the rate of deformation will be very, very small. Yes or no? Let us say it is 0 0.004 degrees per second, which means however small this force may be, the fluid will constantly keep on deforming, but at a lower rate, right? So, this is how the fluid is now defined. So, fluid can be defined as a substance that continuously deforms under the action of shear force. This is a shear force. It keeps on continuously deforming. However small the force may be, however small you make the force, but fluids are those matter which keep on deforming continuously when shear forces are acted on that, right? So, this is how fluids are defined. So, if I give you a brief uh, difference between solid and fluid with what we have understood, we know that in both of the experiments, what is different is in solid, the value of force, you know, is in line with the deformation angle beta. So, the how much is the deformation depends on the value of force. But in fluids, how much is the rate of deformation depends on the value of force, right? So, I can say solid can resist the shear force under static condition. So, when the force was applied at a particular angle, solid will be steady. So, solid can resist, but fluid cannot resist the shear force in static condition, right? On the other hand, solids do not keep on deforming continuously under the action of shear force. So, when if the force is applied, depending on the value of force, the solid has deformed to a particular angle, then it will be fixed. It will not continuously keep on deforming. But on the other hand, fluid do keep on deforming continuously, which we already have seen, right? Solid can regain its original shape fully or partially when the shear forces are removed. So, if you applied the force and let us say the solid material has not crossed its yield value. So, and when you remove the force, what will happen is the solid material will fully regain its shape. But now when the force is of such magnitude, when you have already crossed the yield value and now when you remove the force, solid will also regain the partially, the shape partially. But in fluid, you will not see that ha that happening. Fluid can never regain the original shape once shear forces is removed. You are getting my point. So, these are the major differences between solid and fluid uh, technically and I hope you understood that fluids can be defined as a substances which keep on deform continuously under the action of shear force, however small the force may be. So, I hope this has given you a clear understanding about how fluid is defined. Hope to see you soon in the next class. Thank you so much.